three, two, one, and start hating. Don't bother sweating me. You know I'm greater. You was just a little bitch before you morphed into a hater. This is Mark Bell from Supertraining.tv, Supertraining Gym, the strongest gym in the West, answering more questions today for the Power Project. Brought to you by HowMuchYourBench.net, the Slingshot, and the only strength magazine in the world, ThePowerMagazine.com. Just a quick plug to get through real quick with the HowMuchYourBench.net. We have gangster wraps. They are available right now at HowMuchYourBench.net. Check it out. We got slingshots. We have the reactive slingshot, which is a level one in terms of strength a original slingshot which which is a level two in terms of strength and the strongest uh, slingshot that we offer the mad dog which is only for the advanced lifter uh, we also sell knee wraps wrist wraps which can be used as multi-purpose wrap wear them on your elbow your wrist your knee your cack wherever you'd like to wear them let's get rolling we have a question from caleb bailey he, caleb bagley he just asked a question about 37 seconds ago and here we are answering it already at the power project his question is in regards to waking up in the morning wake up and smell the coffee right <laughs> he uh works out has to work out really early in the morning he says he's a coach he says he's a wife no wait he says he's a coach he said he's married and he's got kids and he's got shit going on and basically the only time he has to train is very early in the morning He's just having trouble, like, waking the hell up and training. And uh, <clears throat> it's a very common problem to have. But what I need to ask you is this, is do you have to train at that time every single day? Is there one time a week that you can train any later? Or is there two times a week that you can train a little bit later? A lot of times people forget about the weekend. Now, if you're a coach, maybe you're coaching on the weekend as well. Um, but uh, you normally seasons don't go year round so nor you know normally you're just in a baseball season or football season and so on and uh you know when you're in the off season you'll have uh, more time uh, on those weekends so anyway my point is saturday sunday you should be able to train at a more reasonable hour or maybe even just an hour later and that might help you uh, kind of get over the hump the other thing is keep yourself hungry if you're trying to get up at five o'clock in the morning every day or you know real early like uh, you know 4 30 or something like that trying to prepare a small meal and hit the gym um, how realistic is that long term how are you going to be able to do that long term you're probably not there are people out there that make it happen um, but uh, it doesn't seem like it's working that great for you you're having trouble lifting as heavy as you'd like uh, first thing i would do is um i would do a lot of warm-up sets i'm not sure of your strength level but let's just hypothetically say that you deadlift around 500 pounds I would deadlift 135 pounds uh, for like 10 sets of uh, of like individual singles like just you know pull a rep let the weight you know put the weight down pull a rep put the weight down pull a rep put the weight down just every like 30 seconds or so get your body get your body going the other thing is don't mess around you go in the gym I see too many people go they walk into a gym and <laughs> The first thing that they do when they walk inside of a gym is they lay down on the ground. You start doing foam roller and stuff. And it's like, dude, what have you done? In, in, in pro wrestling, when I used to be a pro wrestler, we used to say, who'd you ever beat? Who'd you ever pin? What have you been through that's so traumatic that you have to come in here, lay on the floor, and start rolling your muscles out? Why are you so sore? Well, what the hell's the matter with you? Anyway, the point is, don't do that shit. You want to do that shit, do it at your house. Do it at home. Buy a foam roller, roll around, and do pitter-patter. You walk inside the gym, take it very seriously, and get right to business. Get right to whatever it is that you need to do uh, for that particular day. Try to get down to business as quickly as you can, and don't fart around. Try to get right into it. That's going to wake you up faster than anything else is. A dynamic warm-up will not do that. Lifting weights will do that. To be warm, to be prepared, to be ready for a lift, all you need to do is the exercise itself. You need to be ready for the exercise itself, the movement pattern itself, and the amount of weights that you're going to use. So uh, you don't need to take all day, and you don't need to do tons and tons of reps to warm up, but you do need to wake your body up by handling some weight and uh, like I said I would do like you know 10 sets of one rep rather than doing like 10 reps and like tiring yourself out I'd do one rep rest 30 seconds boom another rep and then I'd get to uh, 225 I'd do 225 like three or four sets of like doubles uh, and then three fit you know 315 maybe you take 275 maybe you take those tweener sets and make sure that you're you're getting that stuff in now 
here's where you got to use your head. You got to really judge by how you feel. And this is going to be crucial to your success. You're going to write down, you need to write it down how you felt. You need to be very honest with yourself. Uh, if you went to deadlift 500 and it moved like it was 700, <laughs> it moved super slow and you barely locked it out and uh, almost lost your grip at the top and so on and so forth and it just moved like shit, form was off and so on, uh, then you're going to have to record that, write that down, keep track of that. And uh, the following week, the next week that you go to deadlift, back it off a little bit. Do three sets of three or five sets of five, or do some speed sets, or do a reverse band deadlift, or do a block pull. What do I have to think of everything around here? <laughs> Change it up. Try to do something uh, Try to do something a little different there. Um, but uh, what you're going to want to try to do is basically uh, employ about a three-week uh, three powerlifting routine uh, where you're asking yourself to uh, you know, focus in on the three main lifts. doesn't always mean you're doing the three main lifts, but the three big lifts, you're going to focus in on them three times per week. Uh, so if you can hit Saturday, Sunday, that would be two times per week that you don't have to train so darn early. Or if you can hit one of those days, then you're only waking up uh, you know, Tuesday, Thursday, uh, real early in the morning. Um, products like Assault and things like that from Muscle Farm, uh, Amino One, those kinds of things can kind of help you, uh, help wake you up a little bit, help get you into the workout. Uh, I really like uh, Amino One a lot because uh, as of late, I have uh, starved off the carbohydrates. I don't eat them as much uh, anymore, and it does help me. Um, you know, you hit that wall sometimes in training. Uh, after the first, uh, you know, main movement or two. The other thing is, don't ask yourself to do 20 different things. Pick three movements per workout. Pick three movements per workout. Two hard and one slightly easy. So an example uh, would be, let's just say you're going to go in, you're going to do a deficit deadlift. A max set of three. And already that's underloading. You're already underloading. That's going to be a significant amount of weight, less than what you're used to. It's going to get you out of the gym quicker too. Um, after that, you're going to pull the mats out, and uh, you're, going to get, you're going to get rid of that deficit, and you're going to do uh, some snatch grip deads. Okay? Snatch grip deads, three sets of ten. Next movement, bent over row, boom, out the door. Okay? Simple. Make it easy. Now you're in the same spot for the entire workout. You just did a. Uh, you can use this when you coach kids too. If you're if you're coaching them uh, as a strength coach, keep them in the same spot. It uh, makes everything so much faster. Uh, if you feel like you missed out on some stuff and you didn't get everything in the next day, if you want to wake up early and do some wussy stuff, you can. But I wouldn't even recommend that. I would stay out of the gym. Keep yourself hungry. Starve yourself a little bit so you're hungry each and every time you go into the gym. Um, we have one more quick thing to get to. Hopefully that advice helps you out. Uh, somebody asked me about my training split. Basically, every day that ends in a Y, I train. If you listen closely, you hear that? That's the sounds of me training all goddamn day. Um, basically, uh, I've been training just about every single day. Uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday are big powerlifting days for me. Normally, um, right now, Tuesday is a squat or I'm sorry, Tuesday is, a, uh, is a focused in on the deadlift. Uh, Thursday is focused in on bench pressing. Um, I've been bench pressing kind of heavy every other week. On the in-between weeks, I've been doing more, a little bit more rep work. Uh, I've been trying to save the shoulders and things like that. Let's see, um, uh, Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, I train uh, my back a lot. So I'll do, like I just mentioned to you, the advice I just gave to you guys, uh, I'm only doing like three exercises and I'm out. I'm trying not to do too many things. So I'll do a deadlift workout. The next day is heavy rows, heavy back work. Uh, the following day is uh, upper body is bench and bench-like stuff. And if I miss stuff and I need to go back in uh, on Friday, Friday's an arm day. Friday's the day I train my guns. People want to know why I train my guns. I'm keeping the biceps, uh, one arm is 20 inches, the other one's about 19, go figure on that. But I'm keeping the arms big because I want to keep those shock absorbers from when I'm trying to bench big weight. My goal is to bench uh, over 550 in the next meet that I do, which will be in November, the Backyard Meet of the Century Part Dukes. And uh, I want to keep those leverages intact just because I'm smaller, I still want to be jacked. And uh, at about 250 or 260-ish, whatever I weigh on the platform, um, I'm going to want to keep that size on my arms. The bigger your arms are, the better off you're going to be. It's going to help you with your leverages. Uh, let's see, Saturday 
is uh, is geared towards the squat. I'm pushing the squat uh, hard, but it's not heavy every week. It's heavy about every other week. Uh, let's see. Um, also on Tuesday, I use the squat as an assistance movement, so I'm squatting twice a week, uh, but I'm varying it. Sometimes it's straight bar. Usually on Saturday, it's not with the straight bar. Um, Sunday is basically just a full assistance day where I kind of hit uh, minuscule type stuff, uh, rear delts, things like that. And there's other days where I'm doing a little bit of sprint work and stuff, uh, a little bit of cardio type type stuff, and uh, that pretty much sums it all up. So hopefully I, hopefully I gave you guys uh, great advices. Strength is never a weakness, and that is it from supertraining.tv.